Is the Vatican trying to cancel Our Lady of Fatima? Seems like it. Recently, a Vatican official uh, who works for the Marian Department or whatever it's called at the Vatican uh, basically came out and said that when you find in prophecies that are attributed to the Virgin Mary that any parts where they talk about, um, you know, uh, chastisements and things like that, these are not actually possible. These are absolutely false, I think was the statement that was made. We're going to discuss this here as we go through an article from the uh, SSPX website about this, and it's pretty alarming. Uh, if you're like me, you love Our Lady of Fatima, you love Our Lady of Guadalupe, and so forth. And I'm not even really one who gets into the whole chastisement thing as deep as others. Um, I know that a lot of that is spiritual, metaphorical language, and I'm not really going to say one way or the other whether or not, you know, we're going to have a um, physical chastisement. Will there be actual fire from heaven? Will there be, you know, this thing or that thing? Um, uh, I don't really know, and I don't really even get into the weeds of the things like the three days of darkness and sort of the depth of Catholic prophecy a lot of people get into. But I trust that these prophecies are telling the truth, and I know from Scripture and tradition that it is clearly the case that God will send punishments to the human race, whether that be through human actors, like in the Old Testament where the Jews would sort of lose their kingdoms and be invaded by the pagans, uh, or it could be God allowing the world to go to war, like in the Second World War, which seems to be one of the ways to interpret the uh, message of Fatima. Um, or it could be literal fire from the heavens, like with Sodom and Gomorrah, or a flood. I mean, these things are all part of Scripture and tradition, uh, so we can't really deny those things. Before we continue, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. I always forget to say like and subscribe. It doesn't really come organically for me. Um, also, if you are wondering how you can grow a beard like this, hopefully, uh, maybe you're not. If you're a woman, don't try. Um, but if you do want to try to grow an unruly face sweater like mine, you can check out the links in the description for the TKR beard products. They are available for purchase and um, people are pretty happy with them. Go to thekennedyreport.com and visit the TKR store to see our new products, Kennedy's Choice Beard Oil. You can use this on your beard to help with alleviating itchiness, dryness, and irritation of skin. And don't worry, no animals were used in testing this product except for myself. Use Kennedy's Choice Beard Balm for a softer, healthier, manageable beard that is made with natural ingredients. And trust me, I know a thing or two about beards. Visit thekennedyreport.com and check out the TKR store. The links for this are in the description. In addition to our beard products, uh, we also have uh, uh, our frankincense uh, oil and our lanolin balm, which uh, flew off the shelves last time. We just got some more in, so please check those out as well. The links for that are in the description to this video. Okay, so what's happening here with this seeming, seeming denial on behalf of a Vatican official about the messages of Fatima? Uh, well, here's the article here, and um, I'm just going to go with this. There you go, that view there. And I'll make this a little bit bigger. This is from FFS, FSSPX.news, and uh, the article is called uh, Disturbing Statements by the President of the Marian Academy. That's what it was called, the Marian Academy. Analyze and discern the different cases of Marian apparitions as well as the mystical phenomena linked to the figure of the Virgin Mary. This is the new mission of the new body created on April 15th, 2023 by the International Pontifical Marian Academy. It is a goal for the future to prevent alleged messages from generating confusion within the church. Now, first and foremost, I actually support that in theory. There are a lot of false apparitions out there, or at least ones that are unapproved, no one really has the interpretive keys for them, even if they are real. And people lose their minds about things that might, may or may not happen, and I think lose sight of the plot. That's my opinion. So I don't have an issue with that in theory, uh, but, this, but you know, this is not being used for good already. The mission of this new Marian Observatory is as follows. It will be a matter of activating national and international commissions responsible for evaluating and studying the apparitions and mystical phenomena reported in various regions of the world. As Father Stefano Cecchin, uh, he's probably Italian, Cecchin, president of the Pontifical Marian International Academy, stated to Vatican News on April 15th. 
The new structure is composed of a steering committee and a scientific committee, both made of, up of experts in theology, mariology, and ecclesiology. Scientific committees will be set up at the local level in order to operate in the field in a multidisciplinary approach. The Vatican Media specifies that it is important for the Pontifical Marian International Academy to clarify things, because often the so-called messages generate confusion, spread anxiety, provoking apocalyptic scenarios, or even accusations against the Pope and the Church. Again, if I'm being honest, I understand the need for this. There are false apparitions, and I'm, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. But as we're going to see, um, it's already off to a bad start. Father Stefano Kecin, or Cechin, president of the Pontifical Marian Academy, granted an interview to the weekly Alpha e Omega, in which he assures, among other things, that the apparitions which speak of the punishments from God are absolutely false. That's a problem. Uh, the Franciscan fire begins by recalling the authority of the academy over which he presides. We are the only ones competent in the world on the subject of the figure of Mary. That's a pretty bold statement. That is, we are recognized as experts in this discipline, with the right to intervene. Although he recognizes that, it is the bishops who make the final judgment and who have the last word. Right away, this father, God bless him, is kind of out to lunch here because... There have been Marian apparitions that have been approved for centuries by local bishops in the normal way. Um, and this Marian Academy never existed. So I'm not really sure where he gets off saying that they're the only ones in the world who are basically in the position to approve or know of these things, when that's not even how the church has operated for 20 centuries. But of course, the modernists don't really care how the church has operated for 20 centuries, which is why they're modernists. He continues. One of the criteria used by the Pontifical Academy, according to Father Checking, is the following. Does a mother want to punish her children by sending them illnesses, death? No, not at all. So the apparitions that speak of God's punishment are absolutely false. This could pose certain problems. Thus, during the third apparition of Fatima on July 13th, 1917, Our Lady said to the children, You have all seen hell where the souls of poor sinners go. To save them, God wants to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. If what I'm about to tell you is done, many souls will be saved and they will have peace. The war will soon be over, but if they do not stop offending God, a more serious war will begin under the pontificate of Pius IX. So hold on a second here. This priest is saying that where it talks of punishments being sent to the human race through Mary's messaging, etc., that this is absolutely false. But we do have approved apparitions that suggest the opposite. In addition... We go to scripture and tradition. In the Old Testament, how many times does God send punishments? Let's look at what he said just again here. Just to see how absurd that is. The apparitions that speak of God's punishments are absolutely false. This is just simply an untenable position. This is a denial of the de fide revelations of the Bible, which we are required to believe in. There have been physical punishments. There have been spiritual punishments. There have been... Uh, punishments where God uses the instruments, the, the people of other nations to enslave the Israelites and so forth. And this is all because of sin. This is just simply the reality. Um, at La Salette, Our Lady said to the children, people do not observe the Lord's Day. They continue to work nonstop on Sundays. The season of Lent is ignored. Men cannot swear without taking God's name in vain. Disobedience and forgetting the commandments of God are things that make my son's hand heavier. According to the logic of Father Checking, these two apparitions are absolutely false, which seems perfectly untenable. The root of this strange law, uh, of this strange new lie, of this strange view lies in the new appreciation of mercy present in theology for some time and emphasized by the present Pope, but already discernible in John Paul II. A mercy disconnected from justice. I think that's a good explanation. On the other hand, the Franciscan affirms that there has never been and that there will never be papal approval of an apparition because these are private revelations. It should be noted that the apparitions are private revelations. They do not add or subtract from the public revelations, and therefore papal approval is not required. There will never be, and there never was. Uh, the peremptory assertion necessitates a distinction that theology has made for a very long time in which and which has been put in place by the papacy. A distinction must be made by between the authority of the message and its content. 
As for the authority, it does not go beyond the private order, and unlike the public revelation contained in sacred scripture and tradition, it cannot be imposed on consciences. This is true. In other words, no one is required to believe in a private revelation. This is absolutely true. However, on the other hand, as regards the content, the Church can declare that it is entirely in conformity with Catholic doctrine and thus allows a cult, uh, a pilgrimages, invocations, or even mass masses in honor of the Virgin under the title of her apparition, such as Lourdes, for example. For such a cult to be universally authorized, the authority of the Pope is needed, with all due respect to Father Checking. So, uh, this priest is incorrect. I mean, he's playing with words here, as modernists do. Sure, uh, it is not the case that Marian apparitions do go to the Pope uh, in order for them to be approved, but we do have the tacit approval of the Pope. For example, if we add a Marian feast day under the title of an apparition to the liturgical calendar, that is under the authority of the Pope. Um, if parishes are erected under the name, this is under the authority that parishes are erected under, which, of course, ultimately falls under the uh, the, the, the auspices of the Pope. Um, Popes have made pilgrimages to these places. Pope Francis did a consecration of Russia and Ukraine to the Immaculate Heart of Mary at the behest of the Ukrainian bishops who asked for it to be done uh, the way that Our Lady of Fatima asked for. Uh, Pope uh, John Paul II did failed con consecration attempts, nonetheless admitting that the messages of Fatima were real and acting as if they were. Um, you know, we could go on and on. Uh, the First Friday devotions are not apparitions of Our Lady, but they're approved apparitions of Our Lord. Um, and those First Friday apparitions are officially approved, or the First Friday devotions are officially approved practices for Catholic in the Church that, you know, contain various um, rewards and things like that. Um, uh, there are plenty of apparitions uh, that have had papal approval, at least in the sense of practical action. And of course, adding these things to liturgical calendars and so forth for the Universal Church, um, that's a pretty big deal. That's papal approval of devotion to that thing, which is essentially an approval of the fact that it's been approved. So, I mean, this is this is pretty important. Um, so, basically, a new Marian Academy at the Vatican is coming out swinging against, basically, the traditional understanding of apparitions. Now, is this congregation, this academy, going to do its job and actually go after the myriad false apparitions in the church? I don't know. I'd like that. There are a lot of false apparitions, and they do cause people a lot of sort of hastiness in their spiritual life, and that would be good, but it does seem like they're off to a pretty bad start. Ultimately, uh, we should be doing our first Saturday devotions that were given to us by uh, the messages um, coming from Our Lady of Fatima to Sister Lucy, and, um, and uh, we should just move forward with our Marian piety despite what this person is saying. Classic modernism, they're using a partial truth, which is the idea that there are false apparitions, which is true, that we don't know how to interpret these um, messages of chastisement and so forth, which is true, uh, and then basically saying, because these things are, they seem like they might bring danger, they must be false, but this is absolutely false logic that this person has, because this is not the way that we understand the uh, results or the effects of sin in the culture. Uh, we know that God does send punishments. This is in scripture and tradition. And we know that even in the immediate sense in our lives, uh, when we do live in sin, we are punished for it in various ways, whether that be physical, spiritual, or, or psychological. That's just the way that it works as a Catholic. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. And I should mention, um, you can check out the TKR uh, playlists on our YouTube channel. I have started recording. Actually, maybe I'll just bring it up here. I've started recording um, uh, some, uh, there's a, there's an old book that has been out of print for a long time um, about Fatima. And it's called The True Story of Fatima. It was originally written in a different language. Uh, but nonetheless, um, you can see here, I'll share it on my screen, on my YouTube page. You can see here the one uh, thumbnail there, the Angel of Fatima. Um, I'll just click on this. As he approached. And what I've started doing is essentially I'm reading chapter by chapter. It'll be released over weeks and weeks. There's like 20 chapters. They're not very long. This sort of book, and I'm putting it out as a free audio book for people to learn the full story of Fatima. Because beyond all the noise, beyond all the, you know, potential chastisements and that sort of thing, the actual message of Fatima is an amazing message, and we should know more about it as Catholics. 
Um, so real quickly, we'll just listen to a small portion of it here. We began to distinguish his features. We were so surprised and half absorbed and we could not utter one word. He came near us and said, Fear not, I am the angel of peace. Pray with me. The angel knelt on the ground and bowed very low. By some inspiration, they imitated him and repeated the words they heard him pronounce. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love thee. I ask pardon for all those who do not believe in thee, do not adore thee, do not hope in thee, do not love thee. He anyway, that's just a taste of that. Uh, so if you do want to have something to listen to in audio format and learn more about Our Lady of Fatima, the subsequent chapters will be out over the next while. Uh, and they're free for you to listen to because I want to help spread the truth about the message of Fatima because it has a lot of spiritual uh, treasures for all of us. Uh, again, let me know what you think in the comments. And please check out my book, SSPX The Defense, which uh, Amazon bestseller in both the Catholic and Church History section um, uh, about the Society of St. Pius X, Archbishop Marcel of Evan, and so forth. Thank you to the thousands of people who have purchased it and have supported uh, my work. Um, it's been overwhelmingly positive, and I'm, I'm really grateful for it. And let's help defend the Society of St. Pius X, and by doing so, also the person of Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, and by extension, Catholic tradition. Also, in the coming days, you'll see me uh, interviewing uh, en, unas, uh, en unos programas uh, hispánicas, donde voy a hacer entrevistas con algunos presentadores en YouTube, uh, sacerdotes, laicos, Totalmente en Español. I'm going to be on some Spanish language shows. Uh, I'm really excited about that to, to sort of uh, get into that uh, realm. Uh, I haven't spoken Spanish in a long time. And there's a lot of wonderful Hispanic Catholics who uh, are hungry for Catholic tradition. Um, so if you are a Spanish language speaker and you listen or watch this, listen to or watch this show, um, be on the lookout para el contenido español de su... Uh, Favorito podcaster canadiense. Uh, you never thought you'd have your your gringo Canadian, um, uh, small town Canadian uh, going to come out with Spanish language content, but here we are. And uh, so be on the lookout for that. Anyway, this has been the Kennedy Report. Until next time, God bless. Go to thekennedyreport.com and visit the TKR store to see our new products, Kennedy's Choice Beard Oil. You can use this on your beard to help with alleviating itchiness, dryness, and irritation of skin. And don't worry, no animals were used in testing this product except for myself. Use Kennedy's Choice Beard Balm for a softer, healthier, manageable beard that is made with natural ingredients. And trust me, I know a thing or two about beards. Visit thekennedyreport.com and check out the TKR store.